Welcome to more of the Elder Scrolls Legends. We just beat the story mode. I'm Twinkle Butt, in case you can't tell by the title, and the butt icon. Um, I thought a really good way to start, before we started diving into like the cool stuff like solo arena and versus arena, we would take the starter decks that were given to us by completing the story mode and try to do the best we could with them and just like the base cards and see how well we stack up against other people with, with just the cards that they give you. So I thought the best place to start would be the Band of Survivors card. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the cards that I'm using in the description. For the most part, these are all cards that I believe, actually, all these cards are cards that you get through story mode uh, or through um, leveling up and, and upgrading yourself. I tried to leave out any card that was I got from a deck or any cards that I got from my racial level up bonus because I wanted I wanted this to be like a good way for people that are just getting into the game and, and trying to make the most out of what they're given at the start uh, guide so they can just jump in and try out these several decks because I'm actually kind of impressed with all the cards that they do give you at the very beginning this is very very generous um, so for the band of survivors this is the very first deck that we're given and it changes a lot over the course of the story mode. It starts out as, as kind of aggro and then it, it changes to more tempo and then control. Um, and I'll define what all those, in case you don't know, um, aggro is like a super aggressive deck that you, you put down lots of stuff fast and then you try to hit your opponent before they can actually start playing stuff. So it's like, think of Sonic the Hedgehog, trademark, sorry Sonic. And then a tempo deck is one where you're just trying to play in order of the mana that you get. So you have a turn one, you have a turn two, you have a turn three, you have a turn four, you have a turn five, and you win just by having a strong, constant threat on the board throughout the game. And then a control deck is one that you have lots of different cards like Piercing Javelin, Gold Brand, um, you know, or a good example would be the, um, the Arrow Storm ability here, like cards that basically just keep killing off your enemy's threats. And the idea with a control deck is you outlast their early game long enough to put out your big, powerful cards. And so between those three archetypes, where does this deck fit in? So this deck really is more, it has elements from all three, uh, but it's, it's more like a tempo control deck. So what you're doing is you're starting out with these early cards like um, the soldier, the profiteer, the Medic, the Sapper, the Orc Clansman, these all give you, your early game is designed to put bodies on the board. And then you got a lot of cards that also put bodies out, like Frenzied Witch Hunter, Orc Clansman, um, Valen, Valenwood Huntsman, and the Medic. They, they all put more bodies out, but then they also have buffs. And you've got equipment like Assassin's Bow, you've got uh, three Steel Scimitars, and so the idea is that you're just you're constantly putting out more stuff and then you're taking the stuff that's already out there that's kind of weak and you're making it better. So it's it's more tempo. And then you've also got some strong control elements. You have three piercing javelins, you have three crushing blows. I put gold brand in here even though it's really expensive and kind of slow. And what your the strategy that you should be going in with this um, always vicious dread drew draw crab man whatever. And we got tier because that's what I picked when I was doing the story mode. Your idea for playing through this is you want to get guys on the board early. Not necessarily like super aggressive, but you want to just have bodies on there. And then once you have bodies, you want to keep putting more bodies while putting more stuff. And so you have some interesting interactions. Like you've got Starved Hunger here, but you can give them some health with the Medic. You can give them some health with the Legion Shield. You can also just put out, put down a Divine Fervor, or you can use them as kind of like a delayed removal card, because he does four damage, and then if you buff him up with something like, say, the Assassin's Bow, or the Scimitar, um, you know, you can you, you ha can have a really powerful way to remove much more expensive cards than that one. And so, the idea is basically just to keep putting down more stuff, and then it's like the the middle range kind of deck and, and I, I think it's I think I've done pretty well with with what we've got here it's also got a little bit of life gain you've got the sapper you've got the two moons contemplate contemplation you've got um, the profiteer and all this kind of what you want to do is you want to try to keep your health high because you can save up your cards 
because you've got a lot of cards that actually hit hard on their own, like the um, the White Run Troopers or the Reclusive Giant. And what you do is you put them all in your shadow lane when you've, you've got your opponent low and so that you can just hopefully one hit through them. And the extra life that you'll be gaining not only gives you more of a stockpile for when you start running out of fuel, if you need to take a few turns to recharge, but it also lets you get off the triumphant Jarl. So if you are if you get an aggressive start and you keep going uh, and you have more health, you can use this to refuel yourself. And then you've also got Plunder in here to refuel yourself further and give you more items to play with more people that you have on board. So with that said, that's kind of the general way we're going to be taking this Band of Survivors deck. Um, and we are going to do a couple of matches... All right, so here we go. We're going up against Hair Fox. We are playing, this is an unranked match. So we wanna make sure that we get a good strong start. And I don't see any synergy cards to go with Starved Hunger. And since we already have the Kivat Soldier, um, we're gonna try to get something even better than these cards. So we're gonna redraw those two. We're gonna keep that one. Gold Brand, not really happy to see that in the early game, but we are going My second. So true. hopefully we'll be able to turn that around and uh, tap it at like six we do have the sapper though which is a perfect counter to the card that he's we are playing ready for anything. it looks like he's playing very similar strength and willpower that we are but his deck seems a lot more aggressive now if he doesn't remove this this trades really evenly and i actually get some health back Fire. which i might not necessarily want to do i might want to let him pop a couple of runes okay so his turn was a little that was a little bit of a slow turn for him. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and trade here. It's nothing personal. Control the board. And we'll play the soldier over here in Awaiting this lane. Orders. So this gives us maximum flexibility. We've got the ability to buff this guy if we need to bring him up a little bit. Curse you. Okay. Hopefully he's got another one damage card, otherwise that's just gonna okay. Um strange de strange decision on our opponent's part. Cause even if he hits that one in here, it's like it it would still take out. So but I guess he must have another one damage card in his hand. Now unfortunately for our opponent, we can buff our guy up. <clears throat> which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna put the medic Tell me your injuries. Over here, buff this guy up. We're also going to give him Legion Shield. That puts him out of range. It's nothing of, personal. He'd have to do more than just do one damage. He'd have to do... I hear and obey. Um, he's going to have to produce three damage from his hand in order to finish him off. Since he's not playing green, he doesn't have the ability to just, just finish off wounded creatures. So, um, we are now actually t kind of turning the board around for our opponent. Oh. For the He's just kind of, uh, I'm not sure why he put it over there and not over here. Hopefully he won't have a way to remove this. Um, but just in case he does, I'm going to put the white one troop over here because I don't, well, on turn six, we can play this, but if he gets two hits in with that, it's going to hurt a lot. So we're going to put the white run troop down here. I'll mend the wall. So that way, even if somehow he manages to remove this card and hit this guy in face, we can put this guy over here. Let's go ahead and trigger his rune. See if he draws anything. He does not. Hear and obey. It's nothing so first. we're clear to just keep smacking him in the face. And the life that we're getting back from uh, this drain that the sapper is providing us is going to give us a nice bulwark in case he somehow manages to turn the board around. Right now, we have pretty good control. Okay, so he's going to buff it, but I've still There's got the 6-2 over here. <laughs> kind of a slow play on his part, I'll be honest. So he can still get a, a pretty good trade over here if he takes the guy out, because I'm going to have to throw that guy into there. But we can still come out ahead if we put the, the tiger in one of these lanes. So we can do this if we want even more life, but I think the stronger play is to put the tiger down. Now the question is, do we want to let that guy kill 
our tiger or do we want to let it kill the white run and honestly i think we're better off letting it kill the white run so we are going to take the trade here we're gonna take the trade here and we're gonna put the tiger in this lane in case he tries to put down any shadow cards next turn this sets us up we can play the two moons contemplative cont contemplation <laughs> A very slow play on my opponent's part. And we draw the same mirror card that he just had. So what we'll do, we'll put this on the board, and this will give us a little bit of... Um, we actually have two options here. We can either set this up and just prepare ourselves, or we can put this on the board. Um, I honestly think the better better play is to put this, and then we'll have more options for next turn, because we can, we can do this if he plays something big. So we'll play this and just not use it. So now we can start activating this to remove his cards as he puts them down. The first use will deal two damage, the second use will deal four damage, and the third use will deal six damage. The risk of using this is that it's really slow and hard to set up, but since he's essentially given us an empty board to play on, this is a perfect opportunity. I don't I want to piercing. Well, do I want a piercing javelin that? Not really. So what we can do is we can deal two damage to it now and then kill it next turn with the next two damage that we're going to do. Which, because I don't want to waste the, if he's playing red and willpower, I don't want to waste the power that we're going to have on it. And the two damage might be hard to find. So we'll go ahead and use this to set it up. This is going to be a very slow turn for us. This isn't going to trigger because he's going to attack us in the face. But we're going to wait and hold on to it because we're going to be able to remove the next couple of big threats that he plays. Or draw into some other way to start to refuel our hand. Like we've got a plunder in there, we've got a Jarl in there. But right now he does have the initiative. We are ready for anything. A sapper and a crook and the assassin's bow. You can't defeat us. Okay. So let's see what items we draw. Okay, so we're gonna keep playing it slow. We're gonna go ahead and remove this card. And we're just gonna sit back and wait till we draw some kind of a creature. We're gonna, it's a little slow. It's a little dangerous to play this way. But hopefully we'll be able to actually get a card off at some point. Um, and once we do, we can actually buff it in a lot of different ways. Okay, see, he's going to hit us really hard, but it's going to draw us a lot of cards. It's nothing first. Okay. So let's see. What we want to do is we want to... Go ahead, and we're going to Piercing Javelin the Croc. That's for sure. And then we're going to use Gold Brand to remove this. And then we will put down a Starved Hunger right here. And then we'll buff it up with the Legion Shield. We'll put it, no, we'll put it in the shadow lane because we don't want him to do anything sneaky. There we go. So now we have our own 5-4. We don't want him to get initiative. And because he's not going to attack Time us, we're actually going to get, nope, nope. Fire small to eat. Well, he's really running out of initiative here. So unless he draws into some removal, we're going to be pretty good for a while. So we'll go ahead We'll put down the tiger. And we'll put a clan orcsman down and buff up our hungering Daedra. Take on my clan, you take on me. And we'll just punch him in the face. And we'll call it there. So now he had he basically needs to draw a piercing javelin. Awaiting orders. That's definitely not gonna do it. And now, because he didn't attack us, we're going to draw into our Priest of the Moon, which is going to give us four health. 
which is pretty nice. So let's take a look at our total damage here. We're rocking, let's see, 6, 10. I don't think we're anywhere close. We've got 10 damage, 12 damage, 16 damage. We don't have enough. Um, but we still want to keep uh, trading in a good way that benefits us. So we're going to go ahead and put down... Well, first, we can take care of this guy, no problem. We're going to hit him here and make sure that he doesn't draw any kind of rune that's going to give us trouble. He did not. So then we're going to go ahead and play the recru reclusive giant. And we're going to use the battle rage um, ogre as a form of removal combined I'm with the, the, um, the monk. And, glory. Ah! and we're going to let him draw another card. And it was not a prophecy card. So now all we need to do is basically this thing needs to not die. And then we can just buff it up and take care of it that way. Who is the client today? So he's gonna play that. He's gonna deal three damage. Okay, well, I believe we have lethal here. Unless I am mistaken. There we go. So unfortunately, he kind of ran out of fuel there. Okay. We're taking a stand against ocean salt. And uh, we need... Nope, this is bad. We actually need cards to play all these on. Uh, that's okay. Good tidings, citizen. Hello. Hail, friend. Um, I guess he's playing... He might be playing the Imperial deck. Just just a guess, based on his portrait and based on the colors he's using. We'll go ahead and put down the soldier Awaiting orders. in the unshadowed lane because uh, we want to... I don't know, just felt like it. I'm still trying to figure out the difference, like different tactical approaches of when to use the shadow lane and when to use just the normal lane. Uh, because you won't escape alive. I find it uh, very interesting, to say the least, the way how, if what the tactical differences and what the implications are. So we'll go ahead and we'll put him down. This guy's I'm got charge, so we'll have two twos here, which is not bad for turn well. three. We are going to next turn, unless something catastrophic happens, we're probably going to remove his elixir. Chimera, guide us. Oh yeah. It's going down. Although we do have an option. Would it I'd arguably say this is more powerful than this. So we're gonna go ahead and since we have control of this lane, we'll just we'll just take care of that. I hear and obey. Roar and glory. So basically we just wasted battle. his whole turn. Which is very, <laughs> is a very strong punish there. Your orders. So this is essentially he's putting down a bunch of four fours in this lane, which we can take care of one of them. And honestly, well, first let's pop his. I hear and obey. Let's pop his rune and see what happens. Gore and glory. Okay. Not and nothing happened there. Bonda curses. So he's looking to take a lot of damage unless he can actually start making some plays here. Unfortunately, because we have cast out, we can just return that straight to his hand. I hear and obey. Which I think is exactly what we're going to do. So let's go ahead. Well, first let's take a look at the damage that we can do. So if we put down a three and a three we can do up to six damage. So let's go ahead, let's trade wrath. in these guys. For the grain. See if he gets a rune off that. I hear and obey. And he does have a prophecy card. So we'll see what Won't he escape plays. alive. And then we'll go ahead and just cast this out. Oh! 
now things are looking a little dire for him. He's definitely going to have to make some really awesome plays, because we still have the Frenzied Witchman. That's a pretty good play. That's also a pretty good play, but unfortunately, I think we've got enough. Unless he can do something else. This goes into so we've got five damage in our hand. That's seven. So we'll go ahead, For make the, the trade queen. here. We'll use the frenzied witchman. For the reach. Let us stand right together. here. We'll use this one first in case he plays a guard. He doesn't have it, and we'll just. There we go. Very quick game. So that was a good match. That was basically, he was playing the Imperial Might deck. And as you can see, one of the problems is that if you don't get those, it's got kind of a weak early game if you don't draw your, your summon cards. So essentially what happened there is, ooh, wow, that's a strong effect. Um, essentially he just got a little too slow. I'll take that deck. Um, and yeah. So we just got a fast start. That's one of the advantages of this deck is that we can have a fast start. Okay, so now we're facing Ogep, the Forgotten Hero, or it's Agap, perhaps. Wow, we keep going first and we keep drawing this. I'm gonna keep it in my hand. Um, we're gonna draw this. Hopefully we draw into a two this time. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and put the Sapper in this lane on the left. We are ready for anything. He is playing Willpower and Endurance. So again, he's playing more of the Imperial style, possibly. We'll see what he decides to Training do. Training is over. It's time to act. Okay, he chooses to put it in the Shadow Lane, which I'm fine with. Um, we're gonna go ahead and play the Orc Clansman, and we're gonna buff, because what we can do is we can just hit this for three. If he puts down something else, like this, this crushing blow gives a lot of flexibility, so. Take on my clan, you take we'll put on this me. online. We'll start getting some life. Maintaining a lead. Even if he hits in here, we're still gaining net one. Let's see what he decides to play. You can't defeat me! Okay. So we can choose to crushing blow here, or we can just let them hit us in the face. I think what we can do that would actually be really powerful is buff this up. So this gets rid of that. It still lives. And then we have him hit here. We'll just let him control this lane for a while. It's only three damage, and this guy is going to be offsetting the three damage that we would be taking. You're with me, soldier. I await your command. You can't defeat me! Alright, we're definitely gonna crushing blow that. Unless we draw that. Hmm. Now we have a curious question. Now, the better better play is to crushing blow it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Oh, my blade is it's nothing personal. Yeah. And we, even though he had less than three health, we still got the full drain amount, which is pretty nice. It's offsetting all the damage that he's doing over here. So as long as we can keep this thing up and keep it attacking every turn, we're going to be fine. There's really much that he can do. If he plays the effect that buffs all his creatures, we're going to be totally fine. And we can follow up with a Hive Guard, you which is just going to clear this side of the lane for him. Right, that's actually really good. So we'll put the hive guard here. We'll go ahead and buff it. Tell me your injuries. Or do we want to? Yeah, we'll go ahead and buff it. No, you know what? We'll keep. Well, we'll keep. Yeah, we'll buff it. We'll put this guy in here. And we'll go ahead and hit here. Give him a card. But we're already starting to look pretty powerful on board. And again, if he plays like some kind of a support card, we can take care of it with this. I figured he might do that, but unfortunately, me. we're still like pulling out ahead. He can do five damage, but we can get three back every turn. And we've got a really good follow-up in the Senshi Tiger. I think that's it's how it's pronounced. It's nothing personal. We'll go ahead and see if he triggers Tell me where it, it hurts. is not. 
We'll just drop it. We'll see if he's got another one of those. If not, he's going to have even more trouble dealing with this. And even if he does deal with it, we've still got this to put up another another form of taunt. Like, just keep putting things that he has to find a way to deal with. Otherwise, we'll start trading evenly. So this is this is an imp Yep, okay, so he uses that. But like I said, we still got answers for him. And uh, he needs to figure There's out a way a to take control There's of the a you can't defeat me! That's one way to do it. Let's see. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So the question is, do we want to control that side or do we want to control that side? I think we're totally fine doing this. We're gonna get more value on this. Let's heat things so up. So we'll clear out all these one ones. He's just stuck with what he's got. We'll go ahead and give our Gar the taunt. And it's we'll nothing keep hitting his face. Tell me where it hurts. And he actually does have a prophecy card. So hopefully it isn't anything like too dramatic. It's a javelin. Okay. Still though, out of all the cards that he could have javelin, that's not the worst. So that's two javelins down. He's got one more in his deck somewhere. Really powerful card. Maybe that's what he needs to start taking the board back. Or maybe not. We'll see. This this guy's been doing some work. But the the only bad effect of getting so much life early on is that we haven't drawn into any room. So he might actually start getting way back in. Soldiers report. So we need to clear out his You can't defeat me. Okay. Let's see. We want to trade in here. I'll kill you That's where you trade. stand. We'll go ahead and play the white run down the here. And we'll put down the 3-4 over here. And tell then, me where it hurts. Now, we'll see if we can start drawing into some of our own javelins. I'm playing, even though he's probably running that support card, I'm playing this more to start like having a board effect. That'll do. I'm not sure why he chooses Into to trade it that way. Because now it actually gives me... Okay, so he's used up all his javelins. And he's used up his uh, form of removal. So now we actually do have a really profitable trade here. I'm going to go ahead and take it. So this guy's going to go in here. This guy's going to trade here. Let's heat things up. And this guy oh. is going to take care of that. And now he's actually going to hit in here and give me a card. And I've got plenty of ways to take care of a one health minion. And he's out of all of his removal. Prophecy. We'll hold on to that. We don't want to use that yet. Let's wait till it builds up a little bit more. I want to make sure that we use this in a way that gets us control of the board. I stand to serve. Or if he plays like something really awful. <laughs> something awful and chunky. Okay. So this is a good example. We'll go ahead and cast out. Let's go ahead and punch in here. I'll kill you where you stand. And then we'll we will cast out the um Awaiting orders. We'll go ahead and, and play cast out the um Okay, I gotta think about this. I keep saying the, um, I'm really sorry. So do we wanna get rid of this or do we wanna get rid of this? I think we wanna get rid of this, honestly, unless he plays another one of these. Um, but if we get rid of this, even though he plays that and it'll come down again next turn, we can trade profitably and get rid of these. You know what, we'll take care of, we'll take care of this card. So now, uh, Unless he buffs this card up somehow, this trades into that, and they'll be ready to trade next turn for that. Okay, so he puts it over there instead. And then... You must be cleansed. 
Okay, so now he's just dumping his hand, trying to take Your a hold of everything. My command. So let's go ahead and start working him down. I'm gonna I'll kill you where take this you guy stand. here. Let's see if he draws anything. All right, because he got life back. I we'll trade and here, and then we need to put this guy down in this lane. I'm ready for anything. Go and start right, taking control glory. over here. It's a 3-3, three, three, so no matter how he trades over here, I'm going to be able to bop in both guys into that guy, take care of it. And then draw into... Like, remember, I've got three different... Um, I have three different javelins. I think I've only used one. So I just need to draw into one of my javelins, or one of my bigger cards. We do have a life lead, so if we draw the Jarl, that'll give us some cards back. Um, There's a plan. But There's we're definitely starting to run a little low on resources here. So, well, that's interesting. Um, I'll definitely take that. We'll go ahead and play him over here, and then we'll dump him into. Well, we'll do this first. So. I'll kill you where you stand. This goes in case we draw his brother. We'll put him in this lane. So. If I have a way to deal one damage to that card, curse you. we'll take him down. And we'll leave it. We're looking for more control. Because he's going to pop one of my runes and give me a card. But at this point, we're just looking to see who gets the better top deck. Mother of mine. And now he has to decide if he wants to make the trade or not. He should, because if he does it, then I get to kill that, and then I guess he, if he wants to kill it like that and keep it alive, he chooses not to play anything. Okay. Well, in that case, we'll play I'll it like kill this. kill you where you stand. Go I'll ahead. I'll kill you where you stand. And then we'll give it cover with this. And now he has to have some kind of an effect to take care of that. We are going to take a little bit of damage though, but we're going to hopefully draw into some cards that are going to let us like actually execute them. If we can somehow find, um, we need five, we need eight damage from our hand. Then you we won't spoil my plan. Kill them all. Mother of mine. Okay. That's not the damage that I'm looking for. Okay, just give me one of my removal cards. Okay, that is definitely not going to do it. So, he has us at lethal unless we draw a prophecy card. So, let's see. What can we do? We have to get super lucky, basically. Um, I think we're basically, we're screwed. We're out of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, we didn't draw um, the My cards that we needed. Is done. And that's the problem with this deck, is that if you run out of ammunition and you don't draw into a way to get that ammunition back, you just kind of fizzle out like that. But up until the very end, it was actually pretty close. Okay. This time it's against Leoth. Playing the same kind of deck that we are, strength versus willpower. Uh, we will keep this pretty versatile hand. We'll keep it. Turn three, we can deal with a bunch of different things. I've noticed we've gone first every single time, but this is the first time that we haven't drawn our counter effect to be able to take care of his elixir of magicka. Hopefully, that won't make a difference. Okay, we'll play the soldier in this lane. Orders. And now we've got pretty, we've got lots of options depending on what he decides to do. He chooses to execute it. Okay, so he's playing more of a control deck, which I'm is fine. Because we can just do that instead. And it's like it never happened. Um, we still have lots of good options. We can cover this up with a Hive Defender. We can give it the Assassin's Bow. Alright, so he's playing a very heavy control type of deck. So we'll go ahead and put down the white I'll bend the wall. and force him to spend some more of his resources dealing with our resources. 
This this card is best played when you have an empty board or when you have control of the situation. If he has a creature effect, he'll play it. Um, he would have used it anyway. We stand united. Well, unfortunately for him, I have a really good counter to that. So let's go ahead and punch not him in the in face. My city. See if he draws anything. He does not. We'll play Let the Pyromancer. And that'll yeah. take care of his 4-1 pretty handily. We're looking pretty good on options so far. Let's see. It's gonna... It looks pretty good, but... He's definitely going for a more aggressive rush deck. So we can play this or well we can't we um we don't have seven mana, so our best chance is just to put this down and let him trade the four three and the three two into it. Not First, let's punch city. him. See if he has any answer to it. He does not. So we'll go ahead and play the card. Force him to find a way to deal with this card. And even if he does, he might draw uh give us some more cards that we can use to deal with the things that he puts down. Let's see. He's used two of his executes, so he's he's very much like a take control and rush Give the face. Give me a blade kind of and a soft throat. Training is over. It's time to act. So we can give this the dagger, and then now let him trade. But if he does that, he's still going to give us the cards. Okay. Come at me. And I like the cards. Okay, so we're definitely going to play this card. No question about it. Because that's going to reduce all the damage that we're going to take. So we'll play this like this. And then we're going to use Divine... If we use Divine Fervor, that'll make it so that way this can trade evenly. He doesn't have the ability to deal with wounded cards that well. So, But the problem is that that's a lot of... Hmm. We'll go ahead and do this. And we'll punch Not him in the face. In my city. And force him to have some kind of an answer. So let's see what he does. If he doesn't figure out a way to deal with some of these cards, he's gonna have a lot of trouble. You can't nah. defeat me! Right, he's gonna have to do better than that. Let's see, because we've got we are, we do have nine Training damage. Training is over. It's time. We to must act. break through their ranks. Okay, he's trying to just take control of this thing to deal with it. But unfortunately for him, unless something like catastrophically wrong goes bad, we should be okay. So we'll play this guy first, right? Because four, six, nine, yeah. So unless he draws a prophecy. Okay, yeah, we got him. I did take into account the fine uh, order. So he was playing a very aggressive take control and control the field kind of deck. Tariago, this smuggler. Okay, he's playing another strength versus willpower deck. This is good, okay. I like the sapper. I like, ooh, this is really good. A very strong, powerful start. Let's put him down here, so that way we can make sure that he doesn't do anything to mess with that. Actually, there's very little that he could do to mess with it, honestly. Time to fight. Talos. Okay, I. That was a really weird move. He's probably also playing a very aggressive kind of deck. Um, we're gonna it's take the sapper, personal. trade it in here. We'll get that life back. We'll put down another sapper over here. Well. Yeah, we'll put down the sapper in this lane so that way we we are ready for anything. We have the option to put this one on either one of these. We'll start getting some of this life gain on board. He has the option to go up to three mana with his. He takes it. So hopefully he'll give us something that we can crush and blow. Okay, he's gonna crush and blow our own guy. Which that's fine because we have a backup orc clansman. So we're gonna go ahead and give him the buff. Take on my clan, you take on me. It's nothing. And start getting some of that drain effect. Getting this guy in turn one and then having cards to buff him up is a really big advantage that this deck has. It's a, it certainly it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. Okay, he chooses to do nothing, which 
is uh, not what I would have done, but play take this on guy my here. Clan, you take on it's me. nothing. First. Give ourselves even more life. My we'll go ahead and bop thirsty. him in the face. And we'll just hold on. We got two crushing blows, so if he's playing like an aggressive, angry deck, we've got ways to deal with it with these two awesome cards that everyone has access to. Let's see what he's got. I'm kind of spreading across the board, so that way he gives me kind of control effect. Okay, he's gonna decide to use his javelin on there, which I'm totally fine with. Uh, we're just gonna keep putting the pressure on. We'll put the stuff in here. My blade is thirsty. We'll keep applying pressure. Uh, if need be, we can just apply six damage to his face. So we've got eight damage. If we can get all this to hit, and then everything sticks next turn, we've got lethal, which it's not going to. But Bonda, curse you. in case it ever did. Now, is that crushing blow worthy? That's the question. Because we do have a reclusive giant. Okay. That one is definitely crushing blow worthy. Or we can divine fervor and just do trades. Um, I I like getting this on board because it gives me more options for the future. So we'll go ahead and do that, even though this is like the slowest play you could make. Chimera, guide us. We'll My go ahead and punch thirsty. here. And then we'll punch over My here. My blade is thirsty. To put even more pressure on, but not pop his rune. And then we'll force him to move that guy into that guy. And then if for some reason he has some way to remove this and keep that alive, we've got our crushing blows to back up. We stand united. I'll mend the wall. That is a fantastic crushing blow target. Of course he's going to have to go with it, yeah. If we can get this reclusive giant on the board and get it to stick, we're going to have an awesome time. Okay, so let's go ahead, crushing blow this guy. And then we'll play our own Huntsman over here. Um, we'll do one game to him over there. And then if we draw into any of our ways to deal one damage to him, which there's a couple... We'll have the ability to just remove him from the deck. Again, this seems to be like another, a very similar United. deck to ours in that it's about getting early board pressure and then using the willpower control cards to defeat your opponent. Come on. And I'm totally fine if he wants to use his piercing javelins to remove my lesser threats when I've got something like a reclusive giant. So this will be the moment of, of truth. If he has a build, if he has a way to deal with this with a piercing javelin, then we're in trouble. But if this stands uncontested, we have six, 15 damage. So if I can get one more source of damage, we got him at lethal. He has already used two of his javelins. So the chances of him having his third are not that high. Okay, he doesn't have, he's gonna choose to just rush in as much damage as he can. Unfortunately for him, Come I do have a crushing blow. And in the process of doing this, he's gonna Come give me the me. cards and the answers to deal with him. And uh, let's see, so let's, let's do this count again, just to make sure. Now, if we do this and he has some kind of prophecy card, then we're, we're kind of hosed. So I'm not comfortable doing it that way. Instead, we'll take the safe route We'll crushing blow this. I said crushing blow this. We'll battle rage over here. I'm ready for anything. Punch this guy out. And we'll use the assassin's bow to buff this guy to incredible lengths. And then uh, punch him in the face. And then he'll get covered, so he can't like charge and beat it that way. So that doing it that way does draw him all the cards, but it's like the most aggressive and strong move. And this way, he can't stop any of the damage coming in. Okay, he chooses to use a health gain card. It does not put him out of range, because we still have... Oh, I guess it does. Unless we draw into some other form. 
That will stop it. So we're going to have to punch in there. But that was a really desperate move on his part. Okay, so we'll go ahead. We'll punch in here. It's got breakthrough, unfortunately, so he's having a tough time. We'll put the white run troop over here. And we'll put the bearded guard here and give him self guard. And then we'll hold on to the pyromancer in case we need him. Now, if either of these cards survive, we win. He has to basically put up a guard in both these lanes and has to be a guard that has more than five health. So this is a, a more tempo kind of oriented deck like the one that we're running. Okay, that's one answer. He has to have two more of those in order to live and they all have to go into the giant. See, that's that's why I like the giant is because of breakthrough. Even if they try to put things in the way, you can still do a lot of damage. Okay, he has his own divine fervor. And he's gonna buff himself. That is not gonna be enough, unfortunately. So, it was really cool to see this deck against the other deck. I'm just gonna punch him in the face. Good game. A hard -fought victory. Um, this, I feel like this is a very strong form of this deck. It's got a little bit of recovery in case you fight a more aggressive deck. It's got a little bit of draw in case you fight a more control, slower deck. It'll definitely give you a good fighting chance. Uh, it was very straightforward, a great way to start looking at the game. So I'll post the list in the description. Thank you for watching. And uh, if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Consider a subscription. I plan on doing one of these for each of the starter decks, showing how they work, my own spin that I took on them, and just giving a general display. In the meantime, I am Twinkle Butt, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll see you later.